ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit of the Wild Podcast, Blue Please on CynicalBrett.com. When we last saw our brave hero, we were extinguishing braziers and fighting furbolgs, and we have dealt with all of that, and that is actually the end of the furbolg questline in this area. You will be pleased to know that at this point you actually get gear that is usable. It only took us till what, level 21, admittedly this gear can be used at a far lower level, just bear that in mind. It's quite surprising, really, that we didn't find anything to replace it. Bear in mind that I didn't get too much from the dead mines, and since I'm doing balance right now, a lot of my stuff is effectively useless. But we'll use the higher level stuff simply because we've got nothing better to do. Set up our little set right there, and everything should be fine and dandy. Certainly rather take three stamina over one intellect, honestly, considering the amount of punishment you tend to take around here. I must say, I'm kind of impressed by the fact that the mobs hit hard and are actually threatening. That's good. Hopefully teach people to stay alive better than me. Okay, now, we were after some seeds of life, and I was telling you that finding the wisp was kind of annoying. I was a little bit lucky here, but I can just see you getting really irritated by this. I mean, look at this. You've got to catch this wisp. You've got to chase it around. The best way to do it, of course, is while mounted, and then you can just nab it straight away. So if you're trying to run after it, it might be a bit of a pain. But there you go. The last seed is down by the beach, and we're going to be doing some stuff over there if we don't get attacked by every bear in the world. You know, I really, really should have taken the blessing earlier on in Dark Show that more bears! Look, it's, it's a pack of wild bears. Why is it always the bears? Thankfully, those ones are cowardly bears with no spine. Goodbye. There is a buff that you get earlier. If you remember one of the earlier Dark Show videos, you can actually pick one of your... You can pick a buff, uh, one of three buffs, which will stay with you throughout the entire zone. And one of them, I believe, does involve bears. I would recommend that you pick the bear one, because there are far more bears than anything else. And if you pick the bear one, the bears will then be neutral to you and won't try and kill you at every possible opportunity. There was those snails there as well. Those are fairly new. I haven't seen a snail before. They are beasts. They're not critters, but I don't think you can train them. So if you're a hunter wanting to get a snail, I think you might be out of luck. Pick up the seed and then run away from the angry, angry crab. No problem at all. Now once we've dealt with this, we're going to be going back down south once again. Switch out. It's nice being a druid, isn't it? Being able to switch to travel form to get out of combat and then go running wild to move a little bit faster. I'm still trying to get used to the whole movement of it. It's, it's odd, isn't it? A lot of people have said, well, this is more like a druid form, and it should be treated as one with the instant cast, but... Well, not really. It's still a mount. You do get it straight away, but I don't think that's actually intended for live. I imagine you've probably got to train it. You get it instantly in the beta, though. I don't I don't see why they'd give Wargun a free mount. That just seems silly. Even though mounts aren't all that expensive these days, I don't think they'll do that. Okay. Ah, oh, isn't this grove nice and still no useful vendors? Okay, we can hand these in and then things start to get a little bit interesting. This is kind of a cool line. Ooh, it's a nice gear as well. Now we're finally starting to get into an area where it's useful to have this stuff. I'm level 22. I mean, I really should already be out of here. Level 22, I should be going to Duskward, but like I say, I do want to finish these quests. Many, many abilities. So many is a druid. Okay, so what do we have to do? Well, we're going to test a life bringer sapling. However, we're going to head over here because we were asked to go and speak to a druid by the name of Aros who is now horribly dead, it would appear. He was moidered, I tell ya. And he was killed by the Naga. Got his ass kicked. Now, I am told that later on, and this is not in this video, by the way, there's probably going to be at least one more video to finish this area off, that there is a little bit of a cutscene with the Queen of Shara, which will be kind of neat. I assume it's got something to do with the Naga area that we're told to go to. But we will see that in a future presentation, no doubt. So you hand that one in, and he's like, oh, well, I'm kind of upset about this, but I am a tree, so I don't really care. And then we're asked to go and kill the Naga, of course. Go kill Warlord Wrathspine and also kill a bunch of their Myrmidons. Should be easy enough. You do get some nice weapons from that, so it's well worth doing. And your first ring. I haven't seen anywhere else that you can get a ring, so... Yeah, probably worth taking the ring at that point. Rings are fairly rare, as you're well aware. Okay, well, what else do we have to do? Well, we've got to go deal with this life bring a sapling thing, and we've also got to deal with the murlocs. I'm putting this off, honestly. It's freaking murlocs. Why are you surprised by this? Why would I want to do anything with that? 
Now, as regards to what we have to do with it, we've got to go and find one of the consumed bears, and then we use the life bringer sapling, and the hope is that we can deal with the consuming sickness that is plaguing the area. However, at the one time we're looking for bears, we can't find any. Well, we're not looking for bears. There are bears, bears everywhere. However, we can also use it on a stag if we so desire. And the whole point is that we immunize these things against the consuming plague. So we'll use it on the stag and that should do the job. There we go. That gives the protection to it. And you get this... I don't know. It's a sort of weird image of a faceless one right there. I suppose that's supposed to represent the actual source of the consumption, but I don't really know. It's some weird metaphorical thing that I'm not smart enough to understand. Right, what else do we have to do? Well, you know, hand that one back in. Like I say, this it's not all that interesting, but you've got to have some filler quests. It does get interesting after this, though. Now, it's a very odd little variation on a bombing run we're about to do here. Most bombing runs involve killing things. In this case, since it's the night elves and there are a bunch of namby-pamby nature-loving sissies, this is a not so much a bombing run, but a protection run, a immunization run. So what we do is we get on a hippogriff and we actually bomb them with uh, what I assume is a giant dose of antibiotics. Also tells you a little bit about the old ones here. You might want to pause that if you want to read a little bit of lore. Unless you read incredibly quickly. Yes, it's it's not a lot of information, honestly. It's nothing you don't already know about the old ones. Yeah, they fought with the Titans and the Titans sealed them away and all that good stuff. Right. What you do need to do is go and speak to the Flight Master and he will give you a hippogriff in order to do your deeds. I had problems finding the damn thing until I realized, huh, of course, you can turn on the little icon on the minimap and that will show you where he is. The problem with the Grove of the Ancients is that you can't see anything beyond about five feet ahead of you. There you go. Now, you have a word with this fellow right here. He will give you a hippogriff and this, at which point you do a bombing run. But it takes ages, and it's really buggy, as you can see. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to fly that way somehow. Yes, you have a spell called Protect Wildlife. You've got to drop it on a bunch of stuff. The problem is, like I say, this bombing run takes a lot longer than it should, because the wildlife around here is very sparse. And once you've done it, there is no option to return. Now, that annoys me because they've done that before. They've had a number of bombing runs already whereby you could simply click a button to return to uh, your location and not waste any more time, but they don't seem to have implemented that on everything. I don't really understand why. And it's kind of neat that it's not the same kind of bombing run, but hey, and you do get a little bit of information. You get a little bit of text going on right there, but it's, like I say, it takes too long, honestly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed this up for you. Credit where credit is due, though, this is at least a little bit of an interesting variation on the whole theme of bombing runs. And, of course, the fact that this is not really a bombing run, it's a healing run, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know why I'm stuck under the freaking hippogriff like that. I don't know what's going on there again. Beta is beta, as I have to keep telling people. But, yeah, you get a nice big tour of the area. It's not the best area to look at, though, is it? Oh no, it's it's hard to say because what they've done with the area is really cool. I mean, there's so many changes to this area as opposed to other areas. There's massive devastation here, more so maybe than almost any other zone. Even the Barrens has an awful lot more of a lively theme to it. It's like, well, there's a big chasm down the middle and there's a bunch of fire, but we're mostly okay, aside from, you know, of course, camp. Tarajo, that's dead, but mostly we're okay. And here it's like, well, you know what? Everything is completely screwed. So you know, there's tiny little outcroppings of life everywhere. Oh, God, there's more bears. There's even bears here. I can't get away from the damn things. Okay, well, yes, Lothal. They love their Cthulhu-style stuff here, don't they? They absolutely freaking adore it. I don't blame them. Someone made a comment on a previous video and said, oh, well, you know, they're really into the Cthulhu stuff, aren't they? Well, yeah, but there are way, way worse influences to take than Lovecraft, let's be honest here. Cthulhu stuff can often be very, very creepy. It's very obvious that all of the old god stuff is based on Lovecraftian style of horror. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. 
So what we have to do is go to the pool. This is where everything started. It's a nice round off to the quest, actually. I like the fact that it makes you revisit the place that you first went to. It's just this tiny little detail that rounds it off really well. Something of a indication as to how far questing has come since vanilla. It's just it's just better in every way. It really is. Even the low level stuff is better. Uh, you never get to fight something as cool as this. They've even upped the HP, so you actually get a reasonable fight out of it. I think it's just a shame he doesn't do anything other than throw shadow bolts at you. It'd be kind of neat if he pulled off a few other abilities, don't you think? But hey, you know, I can't. I don't suppose he can really complain for a level 20 or so encounter. It seems like it actually scales as well, and because I, I got a bunch of levels. I mean, by here, I'd expect myself to be maybe level 18, 19 if I haven't gone the dead mind. So I don't know if it scales or if it's supposed to be level 20, but. Either way, potentially, you could end up against something very unpleasant here. Well, there you go. Down it goes, and that should be the end of the consumption, which is affecting everything. However, they don't phase it, which I did find a little disappointing, but I don't suppose they can phase everything. And plus, it's not going to make the consumption disappear. Or is it? I don't know. Is it a corruption that's inflicted by the evil energies of that squid thing? Or is it just some kind of disease? Who knows? Let's round up to it anyway. There we go. And we get some nice items out of this. We'll have some ancient cuffs, I think. That sounds like a good idea. Our braces are fairly out of date. Yeah. I think we can do with changing that. You know what I need to do, and someone needs to remind me to actually do this, is reinstall the Baggins mod. People keep asking what my add-ons are, and I do publish them every now and again. Like, for instance, the Cataclysm Prequest video that has the add-ons that you saw. You know, the obvious stuff like the hood and the bag mod. The bag mod I generally use on live is called Baggins, and it does a fantastic job of making it very easy to find what you need. It applies to your bank. It also has a really nice feature whereby it consolidates stuff in your bag. So it'll put things together. Any stacks that you have that are all over the place willy-nilly, it'll stack everything up that it can. Makes things very nice and neat. I used to have something else, I think it was a Bag Gnome or something like that, which was quite neat because it would go through your bags and throw things around and make sound effects and stuff, but Baggins is certainly a lot more practical. I would recommend that for a bag mod. Bars-wise, well, there's only one real option, isn't there? Bartender 4 Casting Bar, which you see here, and Cooldown Monitoring is done by Quartz, which is the bog-standard setup that you really should be using. Aside from that, what I don't have running on the beta is a HUD, and HUDs are really, really good. I mean, they absolutely are. They look very superficial, but they're so very much not. They give you such situational awareness that you wouldn't otherwise have, because you're able to focus on certain parts of the screen that would otherwise be denied to you, especially if you're using a large monitor, which I am. So looking in the top left-hand corner of my monitor is very impractical. So a HUD is going to help you monitor that kind of thing. Other than that, well, it comes down to class-dependent stuff, really. I run Auctioneer, obviously, as you might imagine a lot of people do. And that is very useful, especially for enchanting stuff. It allows me to list all my enchanting stuff and keep an eye on prices and things like that. Handy to have, but it is a big drain on resources because that mod is freaking enormous. So it can cause quite a significant amount of lag for you if you're not careful. Other than that... Class specific stuff, I run Mage Nuggets to keep an eye on some of my cooldowns, I run Power Auras Classic, which is actually the same as what you see here, Power Auras is now built into the UI, Power Auras Classic gives you a lot more that you can do with it though, just bear that in mind. Oh, we're back with the bloody Murlocs, aren't we? This evasion crap is annoying as hell, oh... I understand the purpose for the mechanic, and I remember when I first saw it back in vanilla, I was like, huh, evasion, yeah. So they do it to stop you from exploiting terrain to do things like that. But you know what? I'll tell you this. I I played for quite some time a game called Guild Wars, and some of you might have played it, and I actually enjoyed it for the time that I played it. And you know what? I noticed even in the... PvE portions of it, which was certainly not the priority in that game, that game really was a PvP game at heart, you could just get on the top of a cliff and shoot down at them, and you know what? It didn't stop you. Whereas in a game like this, it's like, oh, well, it can't get to you, so evade, evade. It's such a silly, artificial, irritating mechanic, and I can understand it in, say, a raid dungeon, because they don't want you to exploit the hell out of a boss to solo it, but here, I mean, really, there was no reason, no reason at all why I shouldn't have been able to hit that Murloc, but I couldn't. I couldn't freaking hit it. 
<sighs> this area is actually really annoying. I mean, I die several times to these Murlocs. There are a lot of them. They tend to pull their friends. They bring pets along with them just for good measure. And they tend to evade if they are on top of anything. And there's about 20 or 30 different pieces of crap floating around in the water that they would happily sit on. And where the hell did that freaking Murloc even come from? It was all the way over there. That and they run away, of course, which makes things an awful lot more irritating. Is he, he buggered off for no apparent reason now and is evading there. They need to fix this area. They really, really do. Because it makes killing these infuriating. Very annoying indeed. Something that does need to be resolved. I don't know. What do you guys think? I, mean, I suppose, yeah, I don't really do comment questions of the day, but I'd like to hear your thoughts on this particular one. The evasion mechanic, does it really serve any practical purpose anymore? Like I say, I could see it happening in a dungeon just to stop blatant exploiting of raid bosses. But outside of dungeons, do we really need evasion, especially considering how often it bugs out? Still, after six years of evasion, we still get buggy evades where the game thinks, oh, well, he can't access you. The annoying thing was most of that evasion was coming from ranged mobs. <laughs> just think about it. Just how, how ridiculous that is. Oh, man. As far as I can see, I would just love Evasion to be removed from the game. I recall playing a Ranger in Guild Wars and having a blast just sitting on top of a hill, sniping down. I don't know what it was about archery in that game. It was so satisfying. It's maybe because the, ar the arrows actually arced and had this more realistic approach to WoW where they just shoot in a straight line like really slow-moving bullets. You could actually fire it up in the air and it would come down on them. It was, it was good, honestly. I, I enjoyed playing a Ranger in that game way more than I enjoy playing a hunter in WoW, honestly. It's just, it's more satisfying. Well, a lot of the abilities in Guild Wars are more satisfying. It's not a bad game. I mean, I'd recommend that you do give it a bash. I know Guild Wars 2 is coming out quite soon. Bear in mind, of course, that those things don't have sub fees. So, the thing about Guild Wars is that every now and again, I'll go back to Guild Wars and I don't feel guilty for leaving it because, well, it doesn't have a subscription fee. I'm not going to miss out on anything. Something that a lot of people don't seem to believe in. That's playing more than one MMO. I don't even know if I class Guild Wars as an MMO. I suppose the question becomes, when do you draw the line and where do you draw it? What is an MMO? It's a very nebulous term these days. Massively multiplayer online game. Does that mean that these people have to be in the same area? Is a township kind of lobby enough and everything else being instanced? Does that qualify? I don't know. And back when Guild Wars first came out, a lot of people argued that, well, it's not really an MMO, is it? And since everything is instanced, then surely it's more just like the towns are a lobby system and then you go into a private game. But since then, there have been quite a few games that have gone with the instant setup. DDO being a prime example, and it's very, very good. DDO is a really, really good game, and I'd recommend people do give it a try. Hell, again, it is free. There's no harm in playing more than one of these games. I think the only harm, of course, is to your wallet. I guess maybe because people feel like they need to get their money's worth out of a game they pay monthly for, but I've always found that the wonderful thing about WoW is that I can play it for, let's say I played 15 hours a month. I would feel justified in doing that because think about other games. Think about when you buy a full-priced PC game, you're paying 50 to $60 and your single player is going to last you, what, 10 to 15 hours? And think of the ratio there. WoW's actually really great value, although I don't think that, especially with questing, the entertainment value is as dense. <laughs> the density of entertainment. It's kind of a weird term, isn't it? But it makes sense. I mean, quantifying enjoyment is weird, isn't it? You play WoW for now and you play another game for an hour and you wonder, well, which of these games did I enjoy more? Which did I get more enjoyment out of? And you always find that you get more enjoyment out of WoW when it comes to sheer quantity. You know, just think about it for a second. Compare it to other forms of entertainment. It's blindingly obvious that WoW is really great value for money. It's not the only MMO that is. I mean, hell, a lot of MMOs are good value for money. But it all depends on just how much enjoyment that you can derive from it. But you also look at it and say, well, okay, well, I played this for 15 hours, but... How much of that content was really, really engaging? It's one of the strengths of Cataclysm, honestly, is that Blizzard has obviously gone out of their way to make the content more engaging. So the quality of your entertainment per hour is higher than it was in previous expansions. When it's come to leveling, 
that's been getting consistently better over the course of the expansions. I've said it before, I'll say it a thousand times again. While I do not think Wrath was a good expansion, its biggest strength was its leveling. Its leveling was blatantly better than every other expansion. TBC's leveling was weak in comparison. Vanilla's leveling certainly was. Cataclysm just takes it to a whole new freaking level. Just look at all of these different quests that we're doing right here. Yeah, we just killed a bunch of Murlocs, but now we're searching for strange devices by using what is effectively a metal detector. Half of the things we find are junk. And a bunch of broken timepieces and things like that. You find an ancient device, you put the ancient device together, and then cool Titan stuff happens. It's great, isn't it? Just so, so varied and... The quality of entertainment has risen quite significantly here. You've got to applaud them for that. I think the nice thing about being a player for this long is that I can be critical, but I can still call it when it's good. When you have a large amount of experience when it comes to the time that you've played, you can identify what's good and what's not by comparing it to the other stuff. So in this case, I can tell without even having to debate the fact that the questing in Cataclysm, even at low level, is streets ahead of everything else they've ever done. There's not a question about that. But there's plenty of stuff still to criticize. When you're one of the best game developers in the world, you've also got to accept, and they do accept this, which is what makes them such a strong company, particularly at the end of Wrath and towards the start of Cataclysm. The amount of listening they've been doing to their beta testers during this beta has been incredibly heartening, and it shows a massive degree of maturity within the company. The beta test has so far been one of the most legitimate and worthwhile beta testing experiences I've ever had. Not just because I've been able to put out a ton of content and stuff like that and that you guys have got a big kick out of it, which is great, don't get me wrong, that's fantastic. It comes down to the fact that they have made so many changes. I was in the alpha, yeah, and obviously I wasn't really allowed to talk about that as much as I would have liked to release videos. I didn't even bother videoing anything because the alpha was such a goddamn mess that I actually felt like something was going to go horribly wrong. I really, really did. Speaking of going horribly wrong, Murloc's out of friggin' nowhere and the dwarves aren't helping! Oh, I'm actually gonna die to these friggin' Murlocs here. Ugh, Murlocs are the brain of my bloody existence. I got heals, it doesn't matter because there's four mobs attacking me. Unbelievable. Oh, let's try that one again, shall we? I don't know what it is about this area. Urgh. See, Murlocs! They shouldn't even be here! <laughs> Just a thank you! I don't know what they hurt as well. They hit so freaking hard. I take so much goddamn spell pushback. And I think I accidentally healed one of the dwarves instead of me. Oh. Why can I heal the dwarves and yet they will not help me? Bunch of bastards, I tell you. You know what the most ridiculous thing is? Their solution to stop them from attacking me is to have me go and build a murloc house. No, I'm deadly serious. I couldn't make this stuff up. You will die. Ugh, just go away. Could Blizzard please make the dwarves help? If you're going to make them heal up, at least make them help when you get randomly attacked by murlocs. The murlocs shouldn't even be anywhere near this area. <laughs> Murlocs will be the death of me, quite literally. Aha! Delicious Titan devices! What? Unidentified cooking utensil? Really? Okay, let's fire it up and see what we get. You're gonna recognize this. I do love anything that involves the Titans. It, it seems sort of out of place, but not really. Reminds me a lot of the outcry during TBC. Oh, it's, there's too much technology. It's not WoW anymore. Oh, please. Have you ever played Warcraft 1, 2, and 3? Did you see everything there? Steam tanks, gyrocopters, like it's suicide bombers, all sorts of nonsense. At the end of the day, the Outland was the Outland. Needless to say, it had some weird stuff in it. I do like this techno-fantasy theme going on here. I love stuff with the old ones and the idea that ancient technology existed at one point and the society actually regressed or there was a kind of progenitor race which had vastly superior technology. A lot of this stuff was nicked from Warhammer. Then again, Warhammer took it from other places. Everything's derivative, you know that. But hey, 
Take it from good sources. You know, if you're going to nick it, then nick it from Warhammer, because Warhammer's got some amazing stories. I still read the pulpy nonsense that qualifies as their novels. Okay, folks, let's build ourselves a murloc house. Hopefully they'll leave me alone. We'll see. Oh, God, they're swarming! Well, I'm glad to see they're so happy about the whole affair. It doesn't make up for them murdering me so many times, I might add. Uh, hopefully they'll leave me alone now, but somehow I doubt it. My name's been Total Biscuit, and I will see you next time. Ho, 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 ho.